Welcome to TRS Clips, where you'll find happiness through your own curiosity. What's happening in spine surgery nowadays? I'm assuming it's becoming more and more non-invasive as far as possible. Yes, it is. And more robotics is being introduced. Yes, we are having navigation, image guided, minimally invasive and AI driven robotics. Correct. AI driven robotics. Yes. So an automatic surgeon. Not really. In spine, unlike in surgery done on the abdomen and the chest, the robot only helps us place our screws or implants more precisely. How? We preoperatively plan on a CT scan or intraoperatively with the imaging and we plan it like a Google map. One, just, I'm sorry, I'm making you go slow. Um, a CT scan would almost give you a 3D printout of yeah. the spine. Absolutely. So you're able to feed that into the machine and say exactly on this point we want. Precisely. Okay. That's what we do. When I'm doing it freehand, that is the way I was always doing it, I would put in a 6 millimeter screw in bone which is 10 millimeters. Because I would need that 2 millimeter on either side as a safety zone or a safe zone lest I go out and cause damage. When I pre-plan it using robotics, I can actually put a 6 millimeter screw in a passage which is 6.5 millimeters. So it's a combination of 3D scans as well as the robot helping you. Absolutely. Okay, but practically when you are opening up a human, what is the robotics angle present? Is it a tool you use? Yeah. So in spine, it's basically a hand. Huh? It's a hand which is going to come based on the way I have planned it before the operation. And it's going to come precisely and place itself, allowing me a passage within which I shall put my drill first and then put my screw. Okay. So let's say there is a tube of 8 millimeters in which I want to put a screw of 7 millimeters. I'll see that 8 millimeter tube on a CT scan before the operation. I shall pre-plan the size, shape, depth of my screw, length of my screw pre-operatively, before the operation. During surgery, after my position has been attained, my patient is under anesthesia, the machine will then bring a small tube, which is slightly larger than my screw, and place it precisely, dock it at a point where I go in physically and put the screw. Okay, a bit of an engineering question. How big is the machine and how do you know where to place it? Correct. Because all that will obviously determine then the precision angles. Yeah. The machine today, which is the second or third version of the robot, is something that stands beside us wow. in a small position and is connected to the patient, either physically or virtually, based on certain fixed areas of the bone that it scans. And it has a sort of a hand which moves and comes and docks at that bone. So I need to actually match what I'm seeing with what I have planned before the operation. Once there is a match and it's green to green, like you can look at a red, yellow and a green situation, green to green, then we go in. Damn. That's how it works. It's like Top Gun, where they try Absolutely. locking the aim on the... Your generation is going to be much better than ours. At surgery? At using these tools. How long back did all this robotics and AI get introduced in your world? Well, robotic spine is something that came into India about 8 to 10 years back. How expensive is one machine? <sighs> it's very expensive. How expensive? <laughs> well, it's right now something where... Uh, it probably grows into anywhere between 10 to 15 lakh Indian rupees 
to just get things in but the whole process is 75 80 lakhs and there are disposables of a lakh of rupees that could be used so it's a huge amount of money that's the whole going process in. you mean to import import and get it installed and it's it's an expensive proposition it's a large capital expenditure for the hospitals that invest in it almost a crore roughly well it could go go to a, a large amount of money and how much does one spine surgery usually cost well a spine surgery where no metal is being used could be done anywhere in a public hospital for almost free where uh, the government is subsidizing it to a, a paying hospital depending on the paying capacity of the person so we have actually various options to do it but it's something which is totally based on the affordability of the patient rather than saying that this surgery costs this much uh, it all depends on whether you're traveling uh, economy class business class or first class what's the difference if you're getting first class treatment well first class treatment would be twice business class business class would be four times economy class but in terms of the user experience of the patient user experience of the patient totally depends on the pilot the doctor absolutely so, and i would also assume as a non medico i would want it to be as pain free as possible and as smooth as possible and as effective as possible it would be as pain free as effective but it all depends on the empathy and the compassion of the pilot okay so you are effectively paying for the doctor yes okay um so assuming that i want first class treatment for something in my spine and i'm sure there's a bunch of different spine surgeries but the most common one which is what a slip disc surgery okay would cost how much a slip disc surgery where we are not putting in metal because most slip disc surgeries don't need metal well it could uh, go from anything in a in a sort of a less expensive place uh for about anything for 40 to 50000 rupees at the bare minimum to about 2 to 2 and a half lakhs as far as standard level of care yes if you want somebody to get it in a in a in first class or in you know an executive suite or a deluxe class then you would slightly add on for the perks but you could get anything done between let's say 2 lakhs to 5 lakhs that sort of a thing with being in a in a business class scenario hey if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out all the other clips we've uploaded on this channel you'll find a clip related to almost every single topic as long as you're willing to search for it